Is your snake having a hard time being a snake? They're doing something weird or they're weirdly not doing something that they're supposed to be doing? <laughs> Man, I don't know what to tell you. But let me take a stab at it. Hey, what are you doing? Are you sneaking around my back? Why don't you stay on your thing? Welcome to the green room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Dolly, a snake who does a weird thing, and we're going to talk about that. Say hello to my brother behind the camera. The weirdest thing your snake is doing right now is how it's not making you the victim of today's murderous rampage. Today's? What other days has Dolly been on a murderous rampage? I mean, I don't keep a calendar, but probably lots of days. I'll keep an eye on her. Thanks, Kent. You're welcome. If you have a snake that does something weird, that's actually not a super unique situation. As it turns out, snakes are individuals and they're going to act differently from time to time. It's sort of common for a snake to do uncommon stuff. And there's also weird stuff that snakes do that is actually common weird stuff. We'll talk about some of those. But it's really important to try to observe your animal and understand why they're doing the things that they're doing because some behaviors could signal illness, stress. It could signal that you need to do something different with your enclosure. So it's very important to be in tune with what your animal's doing and try to understand it if you can. Your silly little weirdo snake might be telling you something important. My goofy noodle loves to hang his mouth open so he can drool all over everything. What a silly weirdo. Okay, well, maybe get your snake to a vet. What's going on? I have, look, I have uh, another snake. You don't need to be in this video. You can just be sleeping. There's no reason for you to hang out with me right now. I asked my friends over on Patreon and my friends on the Green Room Pythons Discord server what weird things their snakes do. So I'm just going to go down the list and sort of speculate on what's going on possibly with that snake. And I think we're going to find that a lot of these are more common weirdo behaviors than you might think. Oh good, you're back to the thing. Great. Let's begin with the question from Discord that started the idea for this video. Uh, Mitzi was asking why her ball python burrows. Uh, she says, even with plenty of hides and clutter, the snake wants to burrow under the substrate. This is something that some snakes will do, even if they don't typically burrow. When the inspector's first bioactive vivarium was built, he burrowed all through that thing for about the first week or two. I'm guessing that that probably made him feel more secure than just his hides. Stella, who you can't see anymore because she just climbed all the way up to the top, is a reticulated python, and they typically don't burrow, but every time I change her substrate, she goes through it like one of those worm monsters in Tremors. Tremors? Anyone? Remember that movie? No? All right. There's Stella. After she burrows through the substrate, she spends about the next 24 hours trying to get substrate out of her nostrils. So that's fun. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, crazy girl. We're finally talking about you. Kara told me over on the Discord server that her super dwarf likes to be an alligator in the substrate. Retics don't hide as much as ball pythons, but... Under that substrate seems like a great place to hide or a prime spot for an ambush. Darth Yoda from Patreon told me that his ball python likes to burrow under to get into his hide. He doesn't use the doors of his hide. He goes through the side, which uh, the inspector does often as well. Paul over on Patreon says, One of my ball pythons doesn't use his hide much. If he sees me, he comes straight to the glass. He'll crawl right out onto my hand as many times a day as I'll let him. That is another common weird thing with a couple of possible explanations. In Paul's case, I think his is a pretty well-established snake, so my guess is going to be that the snake probably just is not that concerned about predators and he enjoys coming out of his enclosure from time to time. But if this were a newer snake or a snake that wasn't very confident, less established, I would say that it could potentially be a sign of stress when you see your snake out of their hide all the time. Maybe not the part about crawling onto their hand, but if your snake is out of their hide all the time, cruising around during the day and stuff like that, that's not a sign that your snake loves to play during the day. That's oftentimes a sign that your snake is stressed. So uh, I, my guess is that Paul's snake probably sleeps most of the day but will wake up and come out occasionally. So if your snake is doing a thing where they're awake all day, cruising around, glass surfing, that is not a daytime fun snake. That is potentially a stressed animal. And it's important to note that in the first couple of weeks of bringing your snake home, they might do that, and that's part of the process of just getting used to their enclosure. Uh, them being stressed for a little while before they get used to it is just something that snakes will go through. But if you've had your snake for a while and they keep doing that, it's a signal that you need to maybe 
add some hides, add some clutter, change up the enclosure somehow, maybe change their substrate, something like that, and see if they'll settle down a little bit. Like I said, I think in Paul's case, the snake is just doing its thing, and I wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the future the snake changed their behavior where they weren't coming out as much and hiding more. Those of you who watch the channel a lot have heard me talk about Ron, Dolly's dad, who was glued to his hide the first two years that I had him. He was in his hide constantly, and I rarely had him come out because of that. Well, now his behavior has flipped. He's out of his hide. He still sleeps all day long, but at about dusk and dawn, early morning, I can usually see him out of his hide and uh, he's willing to come out. Sometimes your snake will change what they prefer and that's okay. Several people on Discord mentioned that their snake will only eat if the frozen thawed rodent is just left in there for them. And that's another weird thing that is pretty common. For most ball pythons, you've got to make a marionette puppet out of that rodent and dance it around occasionally pray to a West African ancient deity and eventually that snake will strike. But a lot of snakes, especially ones that are shy, this kind of makes sense because when a snake eats, that's their most vulnerable time. A snake's only defense is their mouth and when they're eating, their mouth is busy. They can't do anything. So it would make sense for a shy snake to maybe prefer a dropped rodent if they can recognize that as food. That's the problem with most ball pythons is they don't recognize it as food unless it's warmed up really hot and dancing around. But if your snake will recognize it as food, a lot of times that's what they prefer. My big pinstripe girl, Damara, is a weird snake because she will strike really hard and fast if I offer to her most of the time. But sometimes as breeding season gets on, she wants to think about her food a little bit and so I just drop it in there. So I know that if Damara doesn't strike at food, I can leave it for her and she'll eat it at some point during the night. Sometimes I'll leave it in there for her and 10 minutes later, I'll hear the strike. So she'll, rather than just eating it, she'll boom, strike. And sometimes she just eats it. She's a weirdo. Hey, are you ready to go back? Are you doing good? Hmm, should I let you go cruise around a little bit? There you go. Tara says, what on earth is the fascination with snakes and glasses? Two other people on Discord mentioned that as well. And glasses seem like a nice perch to climb up on. It gives them something to grab onto. They think that they don't realize they're gonna pull it off your face. They think they can climb up on it. So this is ball pythons demonstrating that while not arboreal, if they are given the opportunity to climb up on something, they will do it. If you have glasses, you probably have had your snake climb up on them. Hey, Stella. What are you doing? You're a troublemaker. You just became my co-host. Little troublemaker. Here we go. Tara says, my boa beelines for my phone camera. If I'm holding it almost all the time, it's almost like she can sense something in the camera. Yeah, I think they can. That's definitely a thing. And that's why I get really great shots of my snakes uh, coming at the camera because I think there's some sort of wavelength in there. Keith Harper said something about his Xbox controller. Where is it? Hang on. Yeah, Keith Harper says his snake is happy to hang out around his neck until he starts playing Xbox and the snake becomes obsessed with the controller. So that might be the same sort of wavelength that cameras put off, but snakes definitely make a beeline right to the camera. You know, people that set up camera traps, like hunters that set up camera traps in the woods, say that animals are attracted to the camera. So there's something that cameras give off. Can I put you back on your tree? Are you gonna be, you gonna be okay if I put you back up there? Go do your thing. If you just relax somewhere, that'd be perfect. By the way, Echo, I can't tell if you can see Echo, but I think you can. She's curled up on a ledge right here. She just shed, right, as I was starting the video. She started to shed. Yep, she left a full shed in there. All right, where are we at? Here's another one that I heard several times from people. Their ball python likes to wedge themselves between the foam and the glass of their enclosure. And this is only uncommon behavior because not everyone has a foam background in their enclosure. Otherwise, I think every ball python would do this because ball pythons especially love to squish themselves. They want to feel squished and being squished behind that background feels better to them than being in a hide. Like inside a hide, they can sort of squish themselves, but they're not, they're still in a little tiny room. When I let my, especially my big females, my big adult females out to roam around the room, they end up squished behind this big mirror and the wall. It makes them feel good uh, to, to be there. Back to the, the inspector kind of burrowing all through the ground. Normally ball pythons don't dig their own burrows. At that time the substrate was loose and he was able to just get down into it before it you know, packed in. But in the wild, ball pythons are going into rodent burrows 
And when you see people dig them out in the wild, they are in the ground. Like they're not in a little room sitting there in like a little like a little hide in inside the ground. They are literally in the with with dirt all around them. They're just in the dirt. And that's what makes them feel safe. So if they can squeeze behind something or under something, somebody said who I think Sarah, yeah, Sarah said that her snake prefers to hide under his water bowl. That's another great example. Burrowing under the water bowl because it makes him feel squished. So this is just a comfort thing for your snake. Here's two that are interesting. Kara says, my boy will wiggle his tail sometimes when I touch him while he can't see me. And Gator Fan also has a snake that does this just on her leg. Two possibilities here. One is Kara's snake might not be a male because this is something that females do if they're in a breeding situation. They'll waggle their tail like that. But also I've seen males and females, even juveniles do that a little bit. There's not... the it's not a high percentage of them, but I have a few ball pythons that will start scenting if other snakes are in the area. So they'll wag their tail and they'll just pee a little bit in different spots, sort of scent marking. But if there's no scent marking with the tail wagging, I don't know. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments. I'll tell you what I think. No, thank you. I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here. Let me guess. You think it's gearing up to leap for an aerial attack? No. It's learning to use his tail as a machete. Not necessarily. Are you going to say something about a group attack? Like she's sending out a signal to round up all the other snakes? Could be all three of those at once. Or worse. Appreciate your input, Kent. I'm going to cover the next behaviors as I do the mid-video handwritten Patreon scroll. A lot of these, hey, what are you doing? You gonna do the Patreon scroll with me? Here, here. You wanna, you wanna hold one side of the board? Look at that. Are you helping with the boards? I don't know how much help this is gonna be. A lot of the suggestions that I took uh, for this video came from the horde of keepers over on Patreon who are supporting the channel and getting some extra perks. I just announced two secret things that are happening on the channel that are huge this year. So the horde of keepers has become the Horde of Keepers of Secrets. Get it? Okay, Stella, I gotta scroll this. Here we go. Uh, all right, let's get to, are you gonna hang out with me while we're doing this? This is gonna be so, it's too, it's too much stuff to do, to hold you and talk about stuff and scroll the Patreon board. I know where we're at. We're gonna talk about why I had Dolly out. I don't even have Dolly anymore, but, but this is a weird thing that she does too. So Lori Weiser, who's been a Patreon supporter for a long time, says that her snake, Marie, does this like half coil wrap thing where she'll just kind of wrap around the prey without striking it and just sort of lazily coil it, I guess, and then start eating it. And that's interesting because Marie is a snake that I produced. She came from the very first clutch that ever uh, hatched out here at Green Room Pythons. And I have her two sisters and both of them, Dolly, who I had to open this thing, that's the weird thing she does. Dolly does that and her sister Tiger Lily does it as well. In fact, when I first got Dolly to eat, she, she, her first few meals had to be assist fed. She didn't start eating right away, but that's the only way she ate. She would just kind of come up and grab it with her body and bring it down, coil it, and then start eating it without ever striking. And she still does that occasionally. Uh, their dad does it occasionally. This is a technique that I have talked about where I actually use it for some of my other snakes. There are some unrelated snakes too that will do that. And it's a good way to get your snake to eat. If they have a hard time eating, you can kind of push a warm rodent up against their neck. And if they flinch and run away, don't do it again. You know, that it's not working. But a lot of times they'll push into it and they'll just kind of coil around it and grab it. So it's a weird thing, but some snakes do it. And... All three of those sisters do it, which is funny, I think. I got to talking and I forgot that I'm scrolling these boards. Plus, Stella is obviously distracting me. Why do you have to do this with me? You don't really have to. This is, uh, this is weird behavior. You know what Stella's doing? It's because all of a sudden, I'm not, I'm doing something other than just talking to the camera. So she was used to me standing here talking, but now that I'm doing something else, I'm scrolling boards. This is a different activity and it might mean food. It doesn't really put her in food mode, but it makes her very curious about what's going on. And I think that's what's happening. What's the next one that's on my actual thing though? So Amy has a snake named Nagini. Amy says, Nagini has always rubbed her face in my hair. On one or two occasions, she's even pulled my hair out of a bun so that she can rub her face in my hair. That's weird. That's not, you know, that's not wrapping around a ponytail like you see a lot of snakes do. Um, she goes, I never understood that, what that's about. Uh, yeah. Amy, I don't know what that's about either, 
because my snakes avoid my beard. And I've talked about it recently in a video before. I don't know if it's that I use beard oil and that could be a problem, or I tend to think that it's the feeling of the beard that they don't like. The thing is though, I'm gonna be at Amy's house in Utah in just a couple weeks. And I'm interested to see how Nagini reacts to my beard. Here's our channel sponsors, Black Box Cages, Lane Labs, and Gray Family Snakes. You guys check out the new discount code for Lane Labs. Here's what happened. I think these discount codes have uh, max number of uses and we maxed it out. So Lane Labs changed their discount code. It's now green 10. Uh, so if you were trying to use the old code and it wasn't working, that's the new code now, green 10. Well done for maxing out the uses, you guys. Good work. So Kat Tao, who is a veterinarian, she's always interesting to talk to, says, I have footage of Lentil, a uh, Stimson's python, in what appears to be hunting a jumping spider on a few occasions. Now, this is really interesting because I've always wondered if smaller snakes, especially like, like imagine a baby pygmy python or even a baby Stimson's python, are they eating bugs, you know, like as their first meals or are they having to find uh, newborn mice? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So are they eating bugs sometimes in the wild? Let me know if you have smaller snakes and have you ever fed them bugs? But the footage of this is interesting to me too because uh, the snake is not getting a heat signature through the glass, I wouldn't think, right? Uh, and the spider's not moving. Maybe it moved initially and drew the snake's attention. Um, but she also says that she believes that the Stemson's python is a lot more visual than other pythons. That's really interesting. I want one. Not a spider, a Stemson's python. Or any Antaresia. Hey, what are you doing? Don't go to the ground. Stay up here, please. Come up, come up here. Okay, so this one, comes back to what people often ask me, especially in the live streams, they, they ask me if the snakes can hear me playing. And I always say that I think they can hear the bass stuff, but probably nothing else. And uh, Peace Python says, my bass playing chair is right next to my ball python's enclosure and without fail, only the bass guitar gets her attention. I'll open the door and she'll choose to slither out onto the bass to check it out. Otherwise, she always chooses to go in a different direction than me. Keith Harper also has uh, the same experience. Uh, with his base, he says, I have a snake uh, who will sit... Oh, wait, hold on. Where's Keith's thing? Oh, I just lost my place. Anyway, Keith has the same situation with the base. The Sundance Kid, I've talked about in other videos, has sat on my ukulele while it's being played. And that's interesting. Like, he won't move if it's being played. He doesn't move. And I think it's the vibration. So I think playing an electric bass causes a lot of vibration. I think it's kind of like a massage to them maybe. They don't seem to be acting scared. You know, they're not they're not coiling up into a ball or running away from it. They they seem to be attracted to it. And in the case of the Sundance Kid, when uh, when we were doing this, Lucy, who takes care of my snakes, and I also teach her ukulele, uh, she, Sundance Kid is her favorite snake and she always uh, pulls him out before a lesson. And she was, she was playing one time and he slithered onto the ukulele and stopped while she was playing. As soon as she stopped playing, he went to slither off and she started again and he stopped. He's like, he is totally into how that ukulele feels when you strum it. Like he's, oh. he's into the vibration of it. That's so yeah. crazy. Musical snake. Hey. Don't be on the ground. Were you taking advantage of the fact that I was talking too long? Crazy snake. I don't want her on the ground. She's very easy to step on. Do not need you on the ground. You can be on my head. There you go. You can be right there instead of on the ground. So these examples all come from people who closely monitor their snakes. That is a sign of a conscientious keeper. Somebody who's watching their animal and observing subtle differences in uh, maybe changes in their behavior or just things that they do that doesn't seem like normal behavior. And again, that's important to do because sometimes it could signal something wrong. You know, most of the ones that we talked about today have a pretty decent explanation, but there are, like I said, some behaviors that could signal a problem with your snake. So it's really important to be a conscientious keeper and know your animal and, and watch those behaviors. So what's a weird thing that your snake does? Put it down in the comments and then click on this video that YouTube is recommending to you. And then let me know if you liked their recommendation. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. I didn't even intend for Stella to be in this video. She was sleeping when I started it.